Yeah. Little sponges. All right. Yeah. Are you ready? I was born oh, ready, Bobby. I'm <laughs> Me too. I was born with an edge on and ready. <laughs> okay. Did you all meet CJ? I did. Oh, I did. Okay. Uh, all right. You will. Okay. Matt, thank you for coming to Dallas yeah. to see us to talk about the born identity, which I saw this morning. What would you think? Good. All good right. Word. Good. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah, well, we're real proud of it. Uh, you know, it was, uh, um, I got involved because um, um, I love the script that Tony Gilroy had written, and Doug Lyman, uh, this director who'd only done independent movies up till then, had this reputation of thinking outside the box a little bit, so I had a feeling that combination was going to make for a really unique uh, action movie. Well, that it is. It is an action movie, and you're doing the most physical role I've ever seen you do. Yeah, definitely. Is there pressure now on leading men like yourself to do more of the physical action and to do it yourself? Uh, that's a really good question. I, I wonder, I mean, because Doug, Doug Lyman and I had a lot of conversations, and, and, and Frank Marshall, we, we talked about how, you know, audiences are really smart now, so they know when you see an actor rear back and then they cut to, you know, a stuntman throwing the punch. I mean, audiences catch on, and they, you know, they'll throw stuff at the screen for an infraction like that. So, so I think it is uh, incumbent on, yeah, an, an actor to do as much of it as they possibly can. Um, you know, and and, and, I, and I've always I, I love doing stuff like that. You know, for for Ripley, I ended up stuck in a room playing piano for three months. So for me, this you know, the chance to to study martial arts and boxing and firearms training and all this stuff it was so much fun for me. It was just six months of like. It was like uh, assassin summer school or something like that. And isn't it just a good business decision because it makes you more marketable if other producers and directors see that you can do the physical stuff? Yeah, I think I think that definitely helps. I think more than anything, it just makes you more credible as an actor. I think if, if, if people are watching you and they see that it's really you doing these things and you look the way you should look while you're doing them, they're just going to buy into the character and buy into the movie. It's just going to make for a better experience for the audience. What's the scariest stunt you had to do in this movie? Definitely for me the scariest was uh, hanging off the side of the building uh, in Prague. We, you know, I had to climb down the side of the building and the, the actual climbing along the side of the building, um, we, we couldn't even get a stuntman to do that because it was just too difficult. They had to get a, a world-class rock climber to, to actually do that. But, but I had to, to initiate it, so I had to climb down the ladder and swing off. And I knew once I let go of the ladder, the only way I was getting down was eventually letting go of the wall and trusting the guy who was belaying me. I was, I was hooked up to a harness and I had a cable, but, but, uh, but, I, but, but I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not big on heights, so that, so that was the scariest <laughs> one for me. Is it true that you passed on Minority Report to do this? No. Well, well, I guess the schedules did, yeah, it did conflict uh, with this and also, and also Ocean's Eleven. But I would never say that I passed on Minority Report. Nobody passes on Steven Spielberg movies. That just doesn't happen. So that rumor is misstated. Yeah, it is definitely misstated. <laughs> the, uh, in the original ending that was written, right. is that the one we see or has the ending been changed? The ending's the same except there has been stuff added um, a little bit. There, there, there's a little action sequence that we, it was a pretty remarkable experience making this movie because this was a, about as permissive as I've ever seen a movie studio. We, they were testing the movie and it was testing great and they were ready to release it. And Frank and Doug and I, you know, and the writer Tony Gilroy got together and said, wait a minute, we know, we, we have an idea that we think would make this movie even better. And we went back to the studio and we said, well, we don't know if this will make you guys any more money, but we think it'll make the movie better, and we're we're asking you for to pony up for it, and they did, and so uh, so it was it was yeah it was pretty it was pretty incredible. It was a pretty great collaboration, um, and uh, you know I've I've had it on the other end where where you where you say, look, I have an idea that'll make the movie better, and they just they're not really interested in hearing about it. Well, Matt, I can only wish for you that the movie does dynamite business, and I think it will. Thanks. And you're wonderful in it. Thanks, Physical Bobby. And all. Oh, excellent. And again, thanks for coming to Dallas. All right, you bet. It's great to see you, Bobby. Um, <laughs> you look terrific. Now, we need to... How many times have you done this? <laughs> <laughs> there more pressure, Matt, on a leading actor like yourself to do his own stunts than there used to be? Well, as I said before, that is an excellent question. Because I think that the audiences 
Okay, one more. And isn't it just good business? The more you can do, the more marketable you are to producers and directors. Good luck. Are I am. Okay? I'm producing Raiders 4. Executive producing? Or no, producing.